So just a quick forward, this system design is a failure. However, by the end of the video, I'll have a perfectly good working system for you. Not only a working system, but a new 3D print as well. Enjoy the video. Welcome back to Huchos. Today on Huchos, I'm gonna be showing you how to set up a novel idea for an NFT system. This is a super simple ground-based NFT, which we're going to be setting up in as cheap a way as possible and as quickly as possible. So there's not too much structure behind this system. All we're doing is running polyethylene sleeves along the ground and irrigating them on a slope. Now, obviously I've got a lot of spare room in the greenhouse at the moment and I wanna utilize it. So that's what we'll be doing today. So for the channels today, we'll be using black polyethylene food grade temporary downpipe. To irrigate this, we're just gonna be using black poly tubing and a pump. Now this pump is the JR2000S and it is a pump that is available on the Kegland website. I'm actually working with the boys at Kegland to injection mold some of my 3D printable parts. And I've actually found that their website is a really cheap source for quality pumps. So I'll link this in the description and they've got stores internationally available. That is the pump I'll be using today. So my idea for this system is quite simple. I really needed to get a bunch of plants out from my propagation system. I need a quick and effective way of setting up a hydroponic system. And this is it. My whole greenhouse already slopes down towards this end. And that means I don't really need to do any preparation. All I need to do is lay out the black plastic and cut it to size. And that's one roll of our downpipe that's made up this space. So I'm now gonna seal the top ends so that the water doesn't escape back out the end with a vacuum sealer. For the return pipe, I'm actually going to use some 90 millimeter PVC, and that's gonna return into a very small bucket. Now, because this system's going to be running perpetually, there is no off cycle on an NFT. I'm actually going to use the smallest container possible because the container has to be underneath all of these channels. It has to be below, so I have to dig it into the ground. I don't particularly want to dig a large container into the ground. So I'm going to run a 10 litre bucket with the pump and a float valve in the system so that as the nutrients are used up by the plants, the float valve replenishes the system. So I'm going to dig down a trench and then at the end, I'll have a 10 litre bucket. I'll get out the trenching shovel that I never find, seem to find a use for. This is like the first time. So I've actually dug down a little bit deeper than I expected I'd be able to. And I'm gonna throw in a 20 liter bucket just for a little bit of extra space. And that will sit in there like that. I'm just gonna drill straight through the side of it to allow the 90 millimeter pipe to drop into it. <clears throat> okay, cause it's on an angle, I'm going for a slightly larger 102 millimeter hole saw. And I'm just going to see where that ends up. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> and over this side, I'm going to put in a float valve. We can then add in some plumber's tape and then add on a 30 millimeter barb. And I'm just running PVC garden hose along the trench and to the float valve and that will supply our nutrient from our reservoir. And we can just drop that entire contraption in. And put the lid on and I'll just fill around. And I'm gonna block off the end of the channel, like so, and we can drop it into place. And each of our plastic channels is going to funnel into this pipe. 
So I'm now going to take my pump and I'm going to adapt it onto a 13 millimeter tube, like so, and I'm going to drop it into our container. I'm going to drill a hole in the top for our feeder to come out of, and I'm just going to feed our power through the side hole here. Now I'm eventually going to have all of this running underneath the ground, but just so I can show you the whole system set up, I'm going to run it over the top to start with. The reason I want it under the ground is so that the, the nutrient doesn't heat up as it reaches the top of our system. I'm going to take our 13 millimeter tubing from the pump along the ground to the top of the system. And for now, I'm going to secure it with irrigation pegs. Okay, so I'm gonna zip tie the end with a zip tie, and then we can spike our pipe and add in our four millimeter barbs. And to those, I'm gonna add four millimeter line, which I'm then going to insert into the end of our channels. Okay, so I'm now gonna make sure that all my channels run back into the pipe. I'm going to connect up the float valve and we'll make sure that the float is at the correct level and we can start running the system. So I'm just putting a hole in each one of our channels and that is gonna be where I insert a four millimeter pipe. We can connect up a float valve to our larger feeder reservoir. And as we open this, our float, our float should be filling. As you can see there, our float is topping up our res and we can let that fill. And here's a quick look at the inside. So we've got our pump, we've got our float, our float valve underneath our entry and it's nice and compact little res that's out of the light. It's also underground so it won't get too hot. Okay, so to get the system running, just cause it's got a small amount in it and I wanna charge the whole system, I'm actually going to, when I start the pump, I'm gonna have a watering can on hand because I don't think this float valve is going to top up fast enough for the running of the pump. Um, but that will get to a point where the system is topped up and only uses a slight amount of nutrient, which the float valve will be able to keep up with. So once we've charged the system, the float valve should keep the water level above the pump because the pump will be continuously running and the return pipe will be continuously returning and it will reach a water level that this float valve can keep up with. Um, so just to speed up the fill, I'm going to fill it like this. And now I'm going to turn on the pump. Okay, so our pump's on and you can actually see, I'm not sure if you can see that on camera, the water making its way down the channels. Oh, there you go. So that's actually filling up the channels. That's pretty cool. As I said, the pump's going to outrun the float valve, and I'm just going to top it up as it does. And you can see now, we have water flowing back to the system from our tubes. That's, that's pretty cool. I can't believe this is actually working. Uh, I'm pretty stoked. Okay, so to this system, we'll be adding in some plants that I've propagated in this. This is the DIY propagation shelving unit system that is all hardware store components. Everything here you can find in a hardware store and it's relatively cheap as well. So I've got some capsicums, which I'm going to add into the system and we'll see where that leaves us. But I've also got some micro tomatoes as well that will do nicely in a small NFT. So we'll take these out and we'll put them into our NFT channels. So the way that I'm hoping this works is I just cut a hole the size of the jiffy, slip the jiffy in, the jiffy holds the hole up above it and the bottom is fed by the NFT. We'll see if this is actually going to work in practice, however. So roughly the size of the jiffy, we will take our plant, slide it in. It's going to need to be bit bigger. Slide it in like so. Hopefully that doesn't leak. <laughs> you can see the jiffy is holding up the channel. There's no leaks yet. Hopefully, I think I'm going to do the slits long ways though. 
but we'll see how we go. Okay, so even though it's actually quite early in the morning, it's about nine o'clock, it's getting really hot. Uh, what's the temperature in here? It's already 34 degrees Celsius. So I'm actually going to leave these seedlings till the end of the day to plant. And I'm just gonna see how this system runs and I'll see how those seedlings do over in that channel as well. So I'm gonna come back and replant when the sun's almost set. Okay, so it seems like what I've succeeded in creating here is a giant radiator. This is exactly how a pool heating system works. And even though I expected the water to heat up a little bit, I came out here in the middle of the day and some of the temperatures were 65 degrees Celsius on the actual pipes. The water was up to, I think it was 54 degrees Celsius. That's how hot the house tap water is set to in a standard residential home. What I seem to have created, even though the seedlings have actually survived the day, is a radiator. Oh, that is so hot. Now, this doesn't mean that it's not salvageable and I am going to salvage it in a second. My actual concern was it was going to leak and it hasn't leaked. Uh, at all. So if you're in a cooler climate where the sun's not as aggressive, this may well be an option for you, uh, especially if you're trying to heat up your nutrient over the winter. So one of the factors that I think is a problem in this system is that the water within the pipes is actually touching both the roof and the bottom of the pipes. In this one, not so much with the seedlings. However, the pipe is still heating up. I think that it's feasible, perhaps not in my climate. I don't think that I'll be continuing forward. The main reason is, even though the seedlings are alive at this point, I think that I've actually done some damage to these seedlings. They don't look the healthiest. Some of their leaves are curled up where they've touched the black plastic. But I foresee this system not working because the saturation of oxygen in heated water is almost next to nothing. So these plants are more likely to be deprived of oxygen and die, as well as the obvious heat stress issues with their roots. Now this might actually be offset by the nutrient film technique where you've got a nutrient film at the bottom and the roots are actually gaining their oxygen from the air on the top of their roots as they travel down the channel. But I'm gonna call this experiment a fail in my climate and I don't wanna kill all the seedlings that I've got. So we're now going to pivot and I'm going to set up some pipes rather than these plastic sleeves. Okay, so to pivot this failure, we're going to remove the sleeves on this system and we're going to have a ground-based NFT so that I have enough capacity to house all of my seedlings. Now, hopefully a pipe-based system will give enough shade to the nutrient that it won't heat up as much in the Queensland summer. So I'm now going to remove our seedlings and our sleeves and we can set up our pipes. So let me just quickly elaborate on where I got this idea from. Uh, in a recent video, 50 Years of Hydro, which was an ABC special, one of the systems they focused on was a, a system almost identical to this. And that's where I gained inspiration for this system and wanted to see if it would work. I did actually have slight skepticism on whether the black plastic would heat up, but I wanted to try it for myself just to, um, just to see, and now we know. For the pipes, I have a ton of these spare rain gutter grow systems lying around from previous builds. So I'm going to utilize those. We're gonna cut the ends off and add on the 3D print that I've designed for you today. Okay, so here are the designs that I've come up with. These are end caps for the 100 by 55, I think, millimeter pipe that is available in Australia. This allows you to put 13 millimeter tubing into the top end of your pipe and also allows you to have 
the back end of the pipe empty into a 19 millimeter barbed piece. This will allow us to drop it directly into our return pipe on our outdoor system. I've also included blanking ends so that you can just blank the end of your pipe and that will allow you to do whatever you want with the pipe really. So you now have an enclosed pipe that you can work with because the brand of pipe don't supply a blanking end, which is just ridiculous. So I'm now gonna add all the parts to... It's been the worst day for filming. It got up to 40 something degrees and now it's storming intermittently, but like hail storming, but really aggressively. Okay, so I don't know if you can hear me. Hopefully you can. Now I'm just going to add on the ends to my NFT rails. So I'm gonna leave those dry for a bit and then I'll probably have to plant out the system tonight under lights. Now, it's just a matter of dropping our channels directly into the holes on our return pipe. And then we'll connect up the other end to our pre-existing irrigation, which I'll need to move this way to meet the pipes, but that's about it. And as you can see, we've got a really nice termination on both ends of our ground-based NFT hydroponic system. And you can see here the rail that I've got extra holes in. I'm going to take advantage of these extra holes as a propagation system. So I'll have full-size plants, propagation, full-size plants. I may even drill this out as a propagation area as well. But these rails just lift up and out. There's no permanent connection and I can just move them around as I please anyway. So I can actually just cut this and connect my end and run it directly along the ground behind these rails. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna drill a four millimeter hole in each end so that it accepts the feeder line. I'm now gonna turn on the pump and see how it runs. And as you can see, we've got a really nice flow in all of the channels. We've got a nice film being formed on the bottom and our flow rate looks like that. And from here, I'm just going to plant out the system. And I've also got these micro toms to plant out as well. They're a really lovely little tomato. And there it is. We worked with the design until we got a result. So I'll let you know how this system goes, how it fares into the future. I've got some update videos coming. I need to have some update videos coming because you can see there's a ton happening in the greenhouse and I'd like to share that with you. So all of the 3D prints are available on my Patreon. And if you want to see more videos like this, hit the subscribe button and please share any interesting videos with your friends. It really helps the channel out a lot. Happy hydroponicking and I'll see you next time on Hoochos. What a day. <laughs>